Okay, thank you for sending these questions. Um, I'm going to work my way through them. I've got them on three different pages here, so we'll see how far we get with the length of the video. I may have to make you a second video. So in the first case, let's just draw um, a little normal curve just as a reference so that we can refer back to it in terms of what we're talking about here. Okay. And with the normal curve, what happens is as we get closer and closer to the ends on the right and the left, it starts to sort of taper down. I don't have my stylus, so it's hard for me. I'm trying to draw with the tip of my finger here. Sorry about that. But it tapers down closer and closer towards the axis, but it never will touch the axis, but it gets closer and closer, right? So that's what we call the tails of our normal curve. And so what the question uh, one is asking about is a kind of about those tails. What they're saying is that we are going to change the significance level from 0 0.01 to 0 0.05. Okay, so if we look at that the other way around, 0 0.01 means a 99% confidence interval. So that means that 99% of your data are going to be in this part of the curve in, the, in what's defined as the normal part of the curve. If I do the same thing here for 0 0.05, then that actually is 95% confidence interval. So that means that 95% of the population are going to be in the normal part of the curve and the rest are in the tails, okay? So when we think about that, the difference between 99 and 95, then what's going to happen is for 99%, only 1% will be at this point and this point. Only 1% of the population makes up those two tails for a 99% confidence interval. And that's what we call those critical regions. That's what the tails are. So the 95% would mean that instead of 1% in each of those tails, we would have 2.5% if it was a two-tailed test in each of those tails. Okay. So the question is asking you to identify which ones are true there, and so I won't answer it for you, but I will give you enough information that you can answer it. Um, what we are going to do is, when we do a hypothesis, t hypothesis test, we have two hypotheses, right? We have the null, which says that basically the two means are basically the same, which means that both means are in this normal region, that's all it means. The alternate hypothesis is that that's not true. So we would, if I had room, because I'm trying to write with my finger, <laughs> I'll write it down here, um, we would just put a not equal there. So either they're equal or they're not. And in statistics, in the normal curve, what that means is that if they're in this part of the curve that we've talked about here, the normal region, they're equal. If they're out here in these critical regions or the tails of the curve, they're not. So the, hy the null hypothesis is true if both of those values fall here. And the alternate hypothesis is true or the null is rejected is another way to look at it if the values fall out in the tail. And so when you're reading through those answers, anything that refers to going from 0.11 or 0 0.01 which is 99% to 0 0.05 which is 95% what that's going to do is lengthen um, the, the tails of your graph it's going to shorten this normal region in here and so it's going to reduce the chance of accepting the null hypothesis it's going to increase the chance of rejecting the null hypothesis because now you have bigger tails, right? You have 5% out here and here. So you have a little bit of a higher chance of landing in those tails than you did before. So hopefully that will help you choose the correct question, the correct answers from, from here. And it says check all that apply. So it's, it's looking for more than one right answer there, okay? For the second question, for this number two question here. It's along the same lines, and you need to understand what these four things are that they're describing. A small level of significance and a large level of significance is referring back to these 99% and 
um, numbers. And those are not necessarily going to be evidence against the null hypothesis. Um, in terms of evidence, your better evidence is your p-value, okay? And so, if again, if you want to prove that your data is in the normal region, then you don't want it to be in the critical region. So if you have a small p-value, then that is going to put your results here or here. A large p-value is going to put your results somewhere in here. And so again, that should help you to decide. Remember that this is where the null is true, and these regions are where the alternate hypothesis is true. And so if you have a small p, uh, a small p value, you're making a much smaller tail for your graph. And so the chances of accepting the null hypothesis are much larger, OK? For B, in formulating hypotheses for a statistical test or significance, the null hypothesis is often. So for this question, when you look at the choices here in terms of what they're getting at, um, what they're getting at there is the idea that when we construct our null hypothesis, um, it's always a statement that the two means are equal or that the data that we're comparing to the mean is um, sample data versus population data um, are equal. And I explained in the earlier question that the uh, equal in statistics is a little bit different than equal in other mathematics. Um, equal means that it's in that normal curve range. So it's not in the tails, it's in this normal range. Um, and so when you read through your answers there, you're looking for an answer that will indicate that for all intents and purposes, there is no difference in the, um, in the two averages that you're looking at or the two means that you're looking at. So um, unfortunately, this video has already gone to seven minutes. So I'm going to stop it there, and I'm going to address the other questions in another video and send that to you separately.